Sunday. I just got up. I didn't just get up. I got up a long time ago. Anyways, did my little blogilates routine. Not even wearing mascara. Um, and I got my slow cooker apples going. I am in the mood for fall. I have my um, Ashland honey pear candle that I got at Miguel's a while ago, and it's just creating all of the all of the fall vibes in here, kind of. Um, I'm a, and I'm loving how my apartment is super clean right now. I kind of want to go to Miguel's today and look at the fall stuff because um, I want to get a little pumpkin for to replace my pineapple for the season since summer is going away, although it's super hot. <laughs> Anyways, yeah, I'm kind of wearing this like whatever outfit, <laughs> kind of like a tank top, and I love this um hoodie robe that i got from fabletics a long time ago i don't think they make it anymore but i live in this thing it's so comfortable and i noticed i watched sarah ray vargas i noticed i think she wears this too because i see her wearing something that looks suspiciously similar to this um it's super comfortable anyways today i posted my q a over on instagram and i was getting some comments about uh, exfoliating and shaving. So I thought I would share with you guys some kind of shaving tips uh, at the start of this video. <laughs> Why not? Um, shaving can cause obviously a lot of irritation and ingrown hairs. And one of the reasons that, one of the things that contributes to that is sort of like dry built up skin cells on the surface of the skin, uneven patches, because uh, your razor will hit that and you won't get a smooth shave and you can get nicks and it will cut the hair kind of at an odd angle and make you more predisposed to ingrown hairs. So the questions that I was getting this morning were kind of around like, should we exfoliate before shaving? You want to be careful. Shaving by itself is kind of exfoliating. I mean, it is. It's, it's a form of mechanical exfoliation. So if you, if you exfoliate before you shave, you can develop a lot of irritation and, um, you know, you can really get an uncomfortable razor burn. Say for example, you did, you did that exuviance peel that I shared in the Ulta 21 days of beauty sale. Say you did that and then shaved your face, whew, you, you, might have, you, you might expect to have a lot of irritation. So I don't recommend doing something like that. However, using an exfoliating acid in your skincare routine prior to shaving actually can kind of help in smoothing out the surface of the skin, allowing for a better, better shave. Basically just allowing your razor to just see those little hairs rather than mounted up skin cells or hairs kind of buried in dry stuff or oily stuff. It kind of just levels the playing field and makes for a better shave. And in my opinion, a really good way to do that is to use <clears throat> a cleanser that has either alpha hydroxy acid or beta hydroxy acid first. I think beta hydroxy acid is a really good choice because it's going to focus in the oily areas um, and the hair bearing areas more so than alpha hydroxy acid, but either one will help kind of soften the skin and smooth things out a little bit. So just lather it to the skin, let it sit on there for a few minutes, and then rinse it off prior to shaving. That certainly can help, like on the face, for example. So after you rinse the skin before shaving, I do recommend lathering up with like a shaving cream. I recommend the Aveeno, Aveeno, I can't remember what it's called, I'll list it down below. Aveeno has a good shaving cream. Anyways, a shaving cream, because it lubricates the surface of the skin and reduces friction and just allows your razor to glide over the skin without nicking or causing excessive irritation. Somebody asked, are, sh are shaving creams bad? They're not, I mean, they, they are really helpful. And after you shave, you wanna rinse the skin of that shaving cream residue and then immediately apply moisturizer. This will help with reducing dryness, irritation, and subsequent ingrown hair formation or razor burn because you've done all this exfoliating. So you really want to replace some of the moisture that's going to be lost from your skin and help to reduce transepidermal water loss after shaving. So that's. That's really important when it comes to shaving. But um, yeah, ingrown hairs are not pleasant to deal with. Another tip 
if you have ingrown hairs, like on the jaw area, in the bikini area, is to apply a benzoyl peroxide gel to them and let it sit on the skin and leave it on there to the ingrown hairs. It will help calm down the inflammation and it will help sort of release that trapped hair and help clear the ingrown hairs. Even though benzoyl peroxide is mostly for acne, some of the same issues that arise with acne, they're kind of sort of playing a role in the ingrown hair formation. You can get um, bacterial problems and whatnot. So yeah, leave-on benzoyl peroxide is going to be helpful if you have an existing ingrown hair, like a really painful bump, uh, to help soften it, reduce inflammation, and help that hair come up out of the, you know, lift up and, and, and extrude. Although in some cases you will see, you will see the, the hair, kind of the, the U of the hair, you will see that on the surface, at the surface level of the skin, like you can see it with your eye, where the hair is piercing down into your skin, you know what I mean? And in those cases, it can be helpful to take a needle um, and sterilize it with alcohol, uh, with an alcohol pad, and just use it to gently lift out that ingrown hair. But be very careful. Don't go like trying to dig things out and probing and everything because you can develop scarring and an infection and whatnot. But in some cases, if you see the loop, only if you see the loop, then it's okay to take a needle, sterilize it, and just use it to lift that out. And then you'll be left with still the inflammatory papule, and you can put benzoyl peroxide on that, and that will help clear up the papule and reduce um, its size and whatnot, so yeah. Yeah, I'm really having fun with the Q&A over on Instagram on Sunday. It's like my little Sunday morning routine to check in with you guys over there. So thank you all for leaving your questions. And I've got my slow cooker going. As I said, I kind of want to go to Miguel's today. I don't know if I'm going to. Oh, you guys, last night I got an eye herb delivery. So I'll share with you what I got. You know I'm a huge fan of the herb. I order from there all the time. Um, and so I'm going to share with you guys what I got this time. All right, I restocked on some Four Sigmatic favorites they're instant coffee i got two boxes best instant coffee i've ever had no no joke i know instant coffee can kind of taste stale but this is really good and convenient when i'm in a hurry i've also really been enjoying their newer peanut butter protein powder this is delicious with a banana as a smoothie it's also really tasty mixed into oatmeal as well with apples very good and then I got two bags of their ground coffee with lion's mane. Love this, two bits. So I'm stocked up for a little while. Then from the herb, I got some Julian Bakery Paleo Thin Crackers, the salt and pepper flavor. Highly recommend these, they're delicious. Um, they are made with almond flour and cassava flour, chia seeds, flax seeds, black pepper, garlic powder, and paprika and sea salt. They're delicious. I can inhale this whole box, but yeah, really, really delicious. And I've tried many Simple Mills crackers before and I always end up liking them. At Costco, they typically have the salt one, salted ones, but I saw these sun-dried tomato and basil crackers and I wanted to give those a try. Uh, made with a blend of almond, sunflower seed, and flax seed, and then tapioca starch, cassava flour, Sunflower seed oil, tomatoes, sea salt, onion, basil, garlic, oregano, pepper, and rosemary for freshness. Yeah, I like Simple Mills. They have a lot of good products. Then, love this stuff, and I haven't had it in a while. Highly recommend it. Julian Bakery has several um, protein granolas, but this is the only one that is vegan. V for vegan. The vanilla cluster. It's delicious. It's made with like pea protein and chia seeds, vanilla, it's sweetened with stevia and monk fruit. And it also has probiotic in it, that's vegan. 
Um, but yeah, it tastes delicious. That's, that's what matters the most. It tastes really good. I got some more KN95 masks um, to have. I like to keep these in my little shoe slash coat closet. So I remember to take one with me when I run out to Costco. So I stocked up on those. And I saw that iHerb is now carrying, can you see this? Focus. iHerb is now carrying the Derma E Vitamin C Bright Eyes Hydrogel Patches. I shared this in a favorites video, Loving It Lockdown, I think is what it was called. And ugh, these are great. Um, I don't use them because of the vitamin C. I just like putting these on in the morning. It kind of helps me wake up. It feels nice and cool. The caffeine in these can help with dark under eye circles. And I really, I it's a pretty good value. You get like um, uh, 30 days worth or 60, 60 patches, one for each eye. You get quite a few in there. These are good. I like these and the number seven ones. I also got some more Nutiva MCT powder, the vanilla flavor. Now, I do not take this as a dietary supplement. I know a lot of people are really into that. I take it solely for the taste. It's really good sprinkled on fruit, like frozen or fresh blueberries or berries with almond milk. It's a really nice dessert. It's sweetened with, I believe, monk fruit, yes monk fruit and it just has a nice vanilla taste and when you sprinkle it on top of the fruit and pour on the almond milk it just makes like like almost like a creamy coating on the fruit similar to like the experience that you get with those yogurt dipped uh, blueberries and things like that that are really popular but are not vegan so yeah love it it's also good sprinkled on oatmeal i just use it as like a sprinkling <laughs> tastes good and the now better stevia french vanilla this is so good these packets you definitely taste the vanilla with these um i was suspicious when i first got these years ago i was like how how much can that vanilla really shine through in the powder but it does very good yeah that's just a little mini herb and four city hall so i'm here at miguel's and they have these cute decorative boxes on sale for 40 percent off i like this one pretty um, fall naturals pumpkins 40 percent off this one's cute Squishy. Okay, even though these are 40% off, is it just me or is $19.99 insanely overpriced for this like piece of foam? My goodness. Some people have a phobia of sunflowers. I can kind of see why though, because they sort of tower over ominously. I, I, I can see that, you know. That feel. On the other hand, these cute little hedgehog critters. Now, that is $19.99 worth. Um, but that pumpkin, even this pumpkin is worth $19.99. I can't even get over that. This one's a little weird. It kind of reminds me of a puffer fish. <laughs> Home goods, and they have some cute stuff. Um, I like those pumpkins. I didn't see anything at Miguel's. I had to have friends and family. That's a nice one. Ooh, Martha Stewart. Oh. That pink pumpkin looks a little looks 
a little flat. It's been deflated. Um, I'm swishing. All right, so I looked out in Home Goods. I'll show you what I got when we get back. But I'm here in Joanne's, and I can actually film in here because they're not blasting music. Um, and cute glittery pumpkins. I already got my little pumpkin though. Spoiler alert. Do you have any good wreaths? Wreaths? Mm. Smells good in here. Sorry if you have the sunflower phobia. I totally empathize though. I I can't stand looking at um, the back of fern leaves when there are those spores. Oh god. Like it drives me mad. It drives me mad. I cannot. I can't deal with ferns. Makes my skin crawl. I have some cute pumpkins here. They had these. They had similar ones at at Miguel's to this. Thirty dollars. Adios. That's a lot for them. How much is this one? 35 okay. Joanne's is way overpriced in their pumpkins. Not feeling any remorse for my, um, for my home goods acquisition. Okay, Hudson is looking like they are trying to copy Tuscany Candle. Tuscany Candle has some shorter three wicks like this. Similar label. Hmm always copycats everywhere. Originality is just not lucrative. They're cute. Gather leaves, memories, families, friends, blah, 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 blah. <sighs> Mini pumpkins. That'd be cute for Margot's little shelf. Margo was like, please, I do not, I'm a minimalist, don't clutter my life with decor. Oh, these are cute. I love these little woodland creatures. I like fall decor that you can push into Thanksgiving. I don't want it to be too Halloween-y. Anything good here? Heavy planner? Kind of picked over. I've actually been using my Happy Planner stickers a fair amount in my Erin Condren um, Daily Duo. I'm finding that this new Daily Duo I enjoy a lot more than prior planners. I feel like every day you kind of can do something different as opposed to like having the whole week at a glance and the whole week you feel like this pressure to have everything match for the whole week. Yeah. So it limits, it limits the sticker usage, but now that I've got the Daily Duo, I'm using my stuff more. Okay, walk away from rubber stamps. We all know how that ended six years ago. I was really into rubber stamping. I love it, but I just don't have the time for it. Mm-hmm. Mm-hmm. You know where I'm headed, you guys. Back to that magic clearance section. Never come in here without visiting there. Hey, that's cute. Hopefully they're wearing sunscreen. <laughs> Stop. Even Joanne's. Even a craft store has the stupid charcoal masks. They're everywhere. Like, look, they're trying to get rid of them. They're ridiculous, that's why. Ooh, isn't that pretty? Now I'm over here at Kroger, Crow Hair. Isn't he cute? With all the fall allure. I love these roses. Roses really smell like food. Oh, 
this that apple juice jar? I saw if you, apparently if you bite into this, it sounds like you're biting into an apple. Like once you drink the juice, if you bite the, like this part, I think it is, it sounds like you're biting into an apple, which first of all, they don't advertise that. I saw, I learned about this via YouTube. Um, <laughs> that's the only way, reason I know about it. But what a horrible, like, I don't know. It seems like that's just asking for a chipped tooth. I don't care. <laughs> I mean, dentists everywhere must just be cringing when they see that. Whoa, have you seen these? Plant-based cauliflower dip, buffalo. It's got cauliflower, red bell pepper, hot sauce, almonds, almond butter, lime juice, red onions. But actually, I don't like buffalo, but they have tzatziki, which I do like. Cool. I had to try that. It's on sale. And my slow cooker apples are looking good. Just like apple pie filling. Really delicious. I'm just going to turn that off. Well, hey guys. So I'm back from my little outing. And I did get, as you can see, a little fall swag. And I'm really happy with what I got. I ended up uh, getting something at Home Goods. Miguel's. A little overpriced and nothing that really spoke to me. I don't like to go over the top with decor items except for Christmas, um, but I just kind of wanted something a little more seasonal than my pink pineapple, just more summery. So I cut this cute little felted pumpkin. But the best part is that if you flip him around, he has a cute little jack lantern fa face on him. So he'll be he'll be ready for Halloween, but then I can keep it. I can keep it neutral autumnal. And I also got these cute little uh, kitchen towels. You know, I always enjoy at Christmas time the red truck with the Christmas tree in the back. Well, I just love this uh, version of it with the blue truck with the pumpkins in the back. So I thought that was cute. Yeah, it just kind of gives it that little extra fall touch. <laughs> Yeah, it's nice to just have that little extra fall touch. Anyways, I did in fact get the plant-based tzatziki, I have a hard time saying that word, uh, uh, sauce, the yogurt cucumber sauce. I love that stuff. So I thought I would taste test it for you guys. You're getting two vegan taste tests this week, uh, weekend. Um, you know I love anything cauliflower and this, um, the ingredients are cauliflower, water, cucumber, almonds, cashews, lemon juice, garlic, apple cider, vinegar, sea salt, dill, mint, and xanthan gum. Um, and it's normally $4.99, but O'Hare was having a sale on this, and then I didn't get the buffalo one. I'm not, I'm not really a big buffalo fan, but I imagine it's worth trying later down the road if this, if this proves successful. I snagged a bag of baby carrots. I love these. Two tablespoons is a serving, and the container has eight servings. Kind of like a standard hummus. Smells like the real thing. It's pretty... An unsuspecting visitor would think it was the real thing. Wow, that is good. You really can't tell the difference. And bear, bear in mind, I know a lot of vegans will get enthusiastic about like plant-based cheeses. I'm not gonna kid you. I don't believe that stuff tastes like the real thing at all. Even though it's been a long time since I've had it, I remember it well enough to know that that stuff, it just doesn't taste like it. It's not bad always, but it just doesn't taste like it. This, you would not, I, uh, I mean, honestly, you would not know that you were, you weren't eating the real thing. It doesn't taste nutty or, at all. It doesn't taste like cashews or anything. I mean, I like those tastes, but 
you know, when you're thinking that you're going to get something and it's slightly different or slightly off, it's just, yeah. This really does taste like the real thing. There's no cauliflower taste to this either. It doesn't taste like, you know, cauliflower has a little bit of a funk to it. Sometimes you don't get that with this. Um, really good. You guys definitely should try this if you want to or if you are dairy free for whatever reason or obviously if you're plant-based give this a try because i don't typically like fake dairy products i don't like vegan cheeses um some of them i like but i like them but i don't consider them cheese like they don't taste like cheese to me you know there's like a there's a nut cheese that is really good but to me it's just it's just a nutty spiced spread it doesn't it doesn't scream cheese to me but this tastes like the real the real thing as i was saying really good i'm glad i saw that in there and decided to give it a try now i'm curious about the buffalo even though i don't like buffalo i kind of am curious about how that would go i bet that would be really good to dip veggies in but speaking of vegan cheeses even though i just went on and on about how i don't really like them i mentioned this in a recent in a recent vlog, this is the same brand actually. Um, the Simple Truth Organic Plant-Based Cream Cheese Alternative. Love this. It does, doesn't taste like cream cheese, so if you're going in with the expecting cream cheese, you're not really gonna get it. But it doesn't taste weird. Um, it doesn't have a weird aftertaste or anything. And the consistency is on point for, a, for cream cheese. So I think it'd be a good cream cheese replacement in recipes. Um, it's nice and thick and spreads really well and it's not grainy or gritty or anything like that. So yeah, this is good too, even though I don't like, even though I don't like vegan cheese. This is really good too. So yeah, anyways guys, I think I'm gonna wrap up the vlog here because I'm getting all the lights and bells and whistles telling me I need to cut it out. Dave Coulier, is that how you say it? said his name? From Full House, remember he's always cut it out. Anyways, um, so I'm gonna wrap up the vlog here. Thank you guys for coming along. I hope you had a nice weekend. And um, if you like this video, give it a thumbs up, share it with your friends, and as always, don't forget, sunscreen and subscribe. I'll talk to you guys tomorrow, bye.